Okay, my topic today is, is been, as, I, as Ruben says, been there in my heart for about the last six weeks. Uh, and but in, in between the you know other things came up. The last session I did was giving glory to God. You know, Jesus said, I give I brought glory to you, and we, we talked about that. Uh, and I think today was the perfect time because something happened today afternoon, which sort of confirms this particular topic. My son has just finished his PhD, he had submitted his paper for uh, evaluation, and today he got an email back, confirmed he's all through, he got through, you know. Ah, it was, you know, it's just, you know, it's like now I got a, a doctor in my son. I got a doctor in my daughter, so I got two doctors. <laughs> so I was really uh, so pleased. I was just sitting there thanking the Lord, uh, you know, for his, such a, this is what family is all about. This is what comes out of the uh, a godly marriage, the fruit of the marriage, right? And uh, to me, and I just was just thanking the Lord. I, I just told my children, I think mom must be having a party in heaven with the relatives <laughs> celebrating this, this wonderful day. Yeah? So, yeah, so to me, this was like a confirmation that this is a time for the message as well. So let me share this. Share screen. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So my topic today, part 13, wow, it's incredible. It's why get married? You know, why is marriage so important to God? It's just, uh, you know, I, I, I've been doing some research on this and I came across some articles, so I'll just put this together. And this is not about, you know, once you get married, what are the journey you got to go through? That is not this. I covered that, uh, I think, about two weeks, two sessions ago on um, family being the, you know, the uh, it's the smallest battle battlefront for God. I talked about that during, the, you know, what happens in a family, what are your role as husband and wife. And so here the key thing is prior to the, you know, you know why does one, God wants us to get married? You know, and that is what I'm addressing. So it is, uh, especially, I think, you know, whether we are married, uh, whether we are young young adults who are going to get married, I think this message is going to be very, very powerful. I really believe this is going to be very, very powerful. So let's uh, just start. You all know what's the first slide, right? Can I have some volunteers? <laughs> Genuine, authentic. You think about Shami? Yeah. Endorsed. Endorsed. Amen. Awesome. Well done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that, you know, I, I, I always say repetition gives, brings mastery. So you keep on repeating this, you're going to be a master. You're going to build mastery around bona fide. You're going to be truly shining for the Lord. Okay. So as I said, Jesus showed the way to authenticity. He filled the mandate. The apostles followed and multiplied and fulfilled. And we are to do likewise as his ambassadors. And I think what, what Ruben said just now is part of his last testimony, disciples making disciples, that's what it's all about. Uh, it's an ongoing journey. It is, uh, you know, continuously uh, building and building and building and multiplying. And that's what it's going to be. So my topic today is why get married? I'm going to address four different areas uh, in this particular topic. Uh, and uh, so number one is, oh, sorry, I'm talking about foundation scripture before I come to the, top, the points. The, the scripture word that I'm using here is Amplified Version. It says, now the Lord said, it's not good, sufficient, or satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper, suitable, adapted, complementary for him. So when God chooses a spouse for you, a partner, he knows the most perfect partner for you who is compatible for you. We may come from totally different uh, you know, skills and uh, backgrounds, but it doesn't matter. But God knows and this is why this particular topic is so relevant. So when God puts two people together from totally different, uh, you know, background, uh, or families, uh, you know, different could be even different lifestyles, uh, you know, it that He has chosen for you. And uh, you know, and and I and I can give testimony to that because when I got married, my wife was she was a Christian, I was a Hindu, you know, and her family were worried some of relatives were very concerned whether you know this is the right thing to do and worse to add salt to wound I, I said I must get married in the temple right so I insisted we must get married in a temple because I'm a Hindu I'm the man right 
so you don't argue with the man. <laughs> but my wife is a smart woman. She she was a woman of great wisdom. She just kept quiet, right? She didn't say anything. She just uh, complied with it. And four years later, what do you know? You know, I'm 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 in in the kingdom, right? And uh, so the best person, you know, I, I give all credit to my wife. You know, she she was instrumental in everything. So this is what it's my journey. Uh, so I'm going to talk about four different topics. What's the point of marriage? I'm going to there are four areas I'm going to cover. One is friendship. Number two is gardening. What do you mean by gardening? Where God talks about the garden. Uh, we have to work. Uh, sexuality, sensitive subject, but it's a very interesting subject. Uh, and family. So these are the four areas that I'm going to talk about today. So number one, friendship. It's not good for a man to be alone. Genesis 2.18. Right, so marriage is an eye-opening glimpse into the inner workings of God. Right, when God says in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, you know, you know, I'm gonna create, I want you to uh, multiply, I want you to take dominion, I want you to subdue you. So everything he said was, uh, there was a purpose for it, okay? So it was his, in a, you know, in his, his working, he knew that he has to use human beings on earth to fulfill his mandate, and that is through multiplication. And multiplication only happen when a man and a woman come together. Otherwise, it's not going to happen, right? So, so this is what God's plan is, right? So we are made in his image, okay? And we are called to image God, to mirror and mimic God to the world, right? Today, I think what uh, uh, Mercy was talking about, what... Uh, uh, Morgan was sharing, that's exactly, you know, an example of what God wants us to do, right? Mimicking him and mirroring him because that's, he has put his DNA in us, right? So when we yield to him, it's his DNA, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to lead us and prompt us in the way that we should lead our life. It is no longer in the flesh, it is no longer the free will, but by led by the Spirit. So God exists in a life-giving relationship. He always, because he is God, is life, God is giving life. Uh, he creates, you know, he created the heavens and the earth. He created uh, the animals and every living creature on the earth. But Adam was alone. Right? When he created man, he said, uh, I created Adam. He first, Adam was alone. So that was an interesting thing to start with. Right? Then he says, earlier God says, let's make mankind in our image. So who was God talking to? He was talking to himself. And then he says, then later Jesus talks about it. He says, it's no longer himself, but God is trying to triune the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they work as a team to accomplish, you know, whatever they want on this earth. So God, if God is not alone, why should Adam be? Right? Hence, his plan for a partner. You know, it's worth thinking about it. You know, this is not a theory, but it is, I believe so. Strongly believe that is why after he created Adam, he realized all the other creatures he created as a pair, right? But and God is a holy triune, and Adam is the only guy who he got created in his image and put his spirit in, but he's a loner, right? And uh, so he's alone. So God sees, okay, I need to give him a partner. So now that doesn't mean that you do, you know, just because God's intention was to have a partner doesn't mean. You got to get married. If God doesn't, you know, if God has never put in your heart to get married, that's okay, because we've seen so many in the Scripture, right? Uh, Christian tradition that's filled with men and women who never married yet, found life-giving friendships, right? Look at the case of Paul. Uh, you know, he had some, so he built up such wonderful intimate relationship with friends around believers, and he was so occupied he didn't even feel the loneliness, right? So if God you know, but God, even though God says it's good to be married, but if you can refrain, if you're not meant to be, that's okay, right? But don't deny yourself. It's got to be done with joyfulness. So, in the wedding ceremony, God says they became one in the flesh, fused together at the deepest levels, right? The exact same word is used for God. God fused together at the deepest level, and in marriage, there is a similar kind of oneness. When a man and a woman comes together, that's oneness. This is one in the flesh. So you're no longer 
you know, a, a, a somebody who's missing something because now whatever was missing in you is become complete with the union of a man and a woman. So why God created was because the Hebrew word refers to the person's spouse as he saw so a loop, A-L-L-U-P, meaning companion or best friend. Right? So our spouse is our closest friend. Our spouse is our closest friend. Why? Because you're going to be, it's God's plan that we live to, till the end, until the day we are called home. It's a journey that we're going to start from the day we are courting to the day we get married, the day we, uh, you know, we, we leave this earth. So that's one of the reasons why God created marriages, for us to walk through this life with the person we enjoy. Right? The, this is a very special person that we have God has given us. Right? Our spouse has the primary relationship in our life. I will look the one who knows you better than anybody else. And is with you in all circumstances. Yeah, even when we start first, you know, it's, we are discovering. It's a discovery mode. You know, it's just like in business. When I teach business, I say when you're starting, you know, you get a business idea, it's discovery. So when you first come together, you get to know each other, you're quoting, it's a discovery process, right? Then you do a startup. In business, you have startups. <laughs> so then the marriage is a startup. And then you get break even. You know, you're struggling in the financial side, you come break even, and then. And then you build into profitability. Now you're, you're having children, and so you become profitable. You know, and then you scale up. You become scalable. I mean, now you have family, your children, you have uh, uh, finances, and everything starts building up. Until next, next you plan the exit plan. So when the children grow up, what do you plan your exit plan? So it marries nicely with what you know, whether it's business or marriage. It's a similar kind of a stages that we go through, but at the same time, it's with the same partner that God wants you to have. Okay. So the so the more you get to know that person, the deeper your relationship becomes, uh, and and that's what God wants. That's why God says the first thing is when you come into union, is your first thing is to build friendship. You, you get to know each other because what is important is if you're actually two broken people coming together, you're totally broken, right? We think you know when we come to the world, you know especially and I thought when we, most most of us when we come to marriage, especially men, they think oh I know everything about marriage. I know exactly what to do, you know, but the moment you get married, you get hammered, <laughs> you know, you get all your mistakes. It shows you how vulnerable you are, how unprepared you are for marriage, right? And that's the beauty about it because when both parties acknowledge that, then the, the discovery, the friendship begins and then it's to build, you know, the lifelong relationship begins to come, comes, comes through. So the foundation of any marriage is friendship. First and foremost, through you know, through uh, what God calls aluk. Then we start gardening. And my number two is gardening. Let God says, let's make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. So God put Adam in the garden to work and take care of it. Then that was a part of humans' job description. Right? God says, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. So we have to increase, be fruitful, increase in number, fulfill the earth and subdue. Right? Humans were created to rule over the earth and subdue it through work and whatever assignment God has given us. The Hebrew word translated rule means actively partner with God in taking the world somewhere from wherever it was to where it should be. So if you look at where it was five, you know, but when God created Adam and God and Eve to where we are today, right? It is just, you know, God, the world has, the earth has changed so many ways, right? It is much more uh, dense, more people, population, uh, skyscrapers, urban cities, uh, technology has come in. So that's what God wants to do, you know, to rule. That means basically take it to, to a better place. But unfortunately, because of the broken world, it has also created a lot of wickedness in this world, whether we like it or not. So subdue doesn't mean to exploit or harm the earth. It means to harness the raw materials, right? And make them, make up, that make up the planet and make something beautiful. So when you look at iron ore, what is in the ground, 
you know, today we're sitting here, technology, even though we're looking at the Wi-Fi, our computers, it's all made of materials from the raw material from the ground. Something is either from petroleum, you know, you break plastics, uh, from sand, you make the glasses or the screens, silicon, and then all the, you know, the casing for the computers, everything is based on metal, from metal that's mined. So nothing here that God is, is surprising to us because God had put it there and he's given us man wisdom to work it, work it and to produce something and make it more beautiful, right? Uh, so this is what it's all about. So when, but again, uh, there are both good and bad sides. So people have used, for example, internet for all the wicked things like pornography, you know, all kinds of nonsense and all these things are happening. So the enemy also uses those resources to bring evil into the earth, right? Things like guns, bombs. I mean, guns can be used for good or bad. So, you know, so we have to be, but whatever it is, we have to make something good, beautiful out of what God has given us. And that means we are assigned, there is a place of work that we need to do. So we have to work for human to flourish. Work could be, you know, technology, you create, you can be an inventor, you can be a farmer, you can be anything. It's all about some sort of work that God has given us assignment. Apart from the spiritual side, which is where we, you know, we have to worship him. And, then we, and you know, actually I've taught another series before where we worship, work is actually worshiping God. We worship God through our, our work. For example, wherever your place, that is your assignment where God has put you to be the light and salt, to be, to be you know, for his kingdom while you're actually working. Uh, in that particular environment. So it's a dual purpose if you look at it that way. So to partner with God to make a garden-like world which human beings can thrive and God can walk with his purpose in God's economy. We live to work, not work to live. Okay, there's a big difference. We live to work and not work to live. So it is, work is not our, uh, uh, what I call it, uh, uh, source of income. Okay, it is not our provision. Provision comes from God. This is a, you know, we have, this is through our, for our assignment purpose. So this is done you know, through our calling, the assignment God has you know, already planned it for us. Whatever assignment you're in, and all healthy marriages are built around a calling. All right, a husband and wife they come together. That is always God gives some sort of compatibility in their lifestyle, in in their callings. Uh, like me and my, you know, my wife and I, we, we had us, our calling was to help orphanages, children, you know, we, you know, through, a, you know, that's what, and you know, both of us had the same passion. So even though we come from a different background, you know, she was an accounting by background, I was an IT person, but, you know, but God, when God brings us together, there is certain common things that for his goodness to do his will, his plan through that union, through that relationship through that friendship that God has developed in that, in, that, in that marriage. So, but also to partner with God for the remaking of Shalom. What is Shalom? Shalom means, you know, it's everything, you know, peace, joy, love, uh, you know, restoration of things, everything is it's all an encompassing uh, meaning. So everything comes together uh, for God's purpose. So Adam was called by God to take care of Eden, but it was too much work for him, right? So, because Eden was massive. And Adam was incapable of gardening at the whole, so he needed help. Okay, so that's why God created Eve. God says, "I will make him a helper suitable for him." The word is suitable because, as I said, the scripture was in the Amplified. You know, somebody is compatible, suitable for the. You know, God knows because He knows who we are to uh, have really. You know, to come together. The word helper is Isa in Hebrew. Isa can be translated as partner, one who comes alongside to help achieve a goal. Right? A helper is not an employee, someone who works for you, but someone or you someone to boss around. Right? A helper is an equal, it's someone you love and respect. So when God brings you together, your partner, in this case, she's your helper or he's your helper, equal, and you're to love and respect each other. You know, I've also spoken about this, you know, that uh, uh, in, in, in hum as human beings, uh, we cannot control another person because at spirit level, we are made equal, right? So when we respect each other, that's because at spirit level, we, 
we are equal. So I can be a CEO, another person can be a driver, but if I respect him and, and honor him, he will love me and we get on very well together. But if I start abusing him, then at spirit level, he's going to resist, there's going to be warfare and he's going to curse me and then there's going to be a lot of un unhappiness. Likewise, in a marriage, if you know if there is a spiritual conflict at the spirit level, if one trying to dominate another, there is going to be conflict and that's what causes you know uh, marriage breakdowns, uh, you know, disunity and all kinds of discord that happens. So that is why God is very particular that we must respect and treat as equal our, our spouse. And, and, and that's how we flourish together in love. So God created marriage for you to do something, to put on your gloves, pick up your shovels and hand in them to go and make a world, right? I just put it in a little bit more amusing way. So we just have, because it is actually put, coming together to, you know, to make a world, something new that God has put into, into our lives as husband and wife for his purpose. Now let's look at sexuality. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame, Genesis 2.25. The first love story in the scripture, they were, yes, they were friends, number one. They were partners, number two. But now they were also lovers as husband and wife. Right? God created the human body and not one part of it is by accident. Our sexuality is part of our humanity. Know that the body is one half of an equation is incomplete. So as an individual, we are incomplete as a, as a man or a woman. Right? So it is like a band without a drummer. So that is why by design, God made us that way on purpose to share our sexuality and with another human being of the opposite sex of his choice. Of his choice. So that is why sometimes when we choose to do it, you know, choose us partners using our free will, uh, you know, things can go wrong because there is in incompatibility. That's not God's plan. So humbling ourselves and prayerfully asking God to bring the right partner uh, gives a lot of longevity in the relationship, peace, joy, love, everything sort of because it's his mandate. He brought the two, two together and he knows this, this plan will succeed. Okay, so, so this is why I'm not saying 100% success, but there could be even when God is brought together, things can go wrong, right? For example, if someone by temptation has gone into adultery for some reason, whatever it is, uh, you know, today I was reading an article about one of the, our local MPs, he's a minister in the cabinet, you know, he had a, a fling with his, one of his uh, staff. Uh, about four years ago, three years ago, and that cost, you know, he's a Christian, he, he brought uh, strong Christian, you know, but uh, you know, this is what happens. So again, it is about being yielding to the Lord, yielding, you know, not to be tempted by, you know, by the flesh. Uh, and but, you know, when you, act, but again, comes sexuality. If there is that active relation, intimacy in the in the couple, in the in the in the couple between the husband and wife, there is no reason for one to deviate from that relationship. Okay, so that is also important because if when one is not cooperating with the other, things can go wrong, even though they've been brought together by God. So he created sexuality as the glue to all marriages together. Right? So that is a very important point that we need to, so there's nothing uh, uh, shame, to be shameful about or uh, to be about sexuality between a husband and a wife because that God encourages that. He wants that to be a very healthy relationship because that's the one that is going to hold the glue, you know, as part of the relationship in the marriage, the intimacy, the friendship, uh, you know, the the sex, you know, the, the the working together. So all that comes together as one, right? So know that if we want to get married in order to have intercourse, that's not bad or it's shallow or selfish. It doesn't matter. It's okay. You know, God is not saying no to that as long as it's not the only reason to get married. Right? As long as it's not the only reason to get married. Because God brings us together to for multiplication, to produce godly children, right? And to multiply 
and to bring you know godly children who can then reproduce they when they start their family they can then be godly parents and continue to you know expand and build and, and subdue and, and multiply right so now adam and live long time ago long before condoms and birth control okay which means it wasn't long before adam and he had children right it's no surprise right it happens and of course they had a longer period to start with their 900 old years they lived you know, so there plenty of opportunities to to make babies okay and uh, praise god for that because god gave them the strength and the, you know and the and everything that they needed to do that because they were starting to build a population on earth so so they need to be like uh, you know much more uh, fruitful i would say the word is fruitful <laughs> right so you know this was by design in fact god says be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth so again this is mandate so it's nothing that we need to be a shameful about or be selfish about that's actually the first command that the entire bible commands the original humans to make babies that's the first thing god said make babies right he he made the animals and the living creatures and he said multiply so he said the same thing to mankind you got to make babies but you yes you enjoy your life you know is a god who's really into the family family is built is a building block of society as a whole right family is the building block of the society so if the family breaks down the society breaks down if the society breaks down the nation breaks down right it's ripple it's just ripple effect so this is why it's so important that when we get come together that we do it in an orderly manner that god has planned for us understand each other get to know each other build friendship trust each other uh, work together uh, and then we start having you know uh, Uh, have will ch- have children together right so family exists to spread god's rule over the earth that's the only way you can produce there's no other way right uh, if you're going to fill the earth and subdue it it's going to take more than one man more than one marriage more than one family it's going to take all of the human race right but each family has got a mandate we have to do our part as well Right? marriage is so much more than just coming together right it was made to do life together to work and sweat and bleed for a better world to make love whenever we wanted and in the end be fruitful and increase in number his always his objective is okay you can do what you want i you have your enjoyments your fun your intimacy but please produce babies right please produce babies that's what that's what i'm interested in i want to see the fruit <laughs> and i like ruben yeah, ruben is one of a classic example right <laughs> right you know so we're doing a countdown we think he's going to have 100 kids anyway so he's going to get a countdown <laughs> right so maybe he live 900 years who knows god might give him 900 years old <laughs> right so just so the funny side okay so that's what god wants us to have that intimacy whatever we want your know, healthy life but his our final expectation is i want you to produce babies godly children bring them up as godly children so that they can continue to multiply take dominion subdue and 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 reproduce All right finally family adam and eve were both naked and they felt no shame two humans wrapped up in a relationship for life centered around friendship gardening sexuality and family it was beautiful but it was short lived unfortunately right because of what uh, the enemy did to to them in the garden right so sin wrecks havoc in adam and eve's relationship adam and eve called to rule over the creation but ended up being ruled by the creation right instead of them ruling over the creation creation got hold of them right because satan was lucifer was created by god and all the fallen angels so they gave away the rights to be dominated by the enemy and hence started the downfall of mankind and what went in there from the, from then it is still in us but praise god jesus has delivered us and we are he's, we are making men to go back to where god wants us to be right so the first place sin rex havoc is in adam and eve's relationship the family i say say the smallest battle unit that's where 
he be a most vulnerable. If we give him room there to destroy the family unit, everything else get destroyed. Right? We have just seen a classic what's happening in USA during the election is a classic example of what's going on. Uh, maybe the next topic I'm going to talk about something around that area. What is our role as believers, Christians, when it comes to, you know, how do we play a role influencing, making sure the right person or right party or whoever they are come, come take, come, takes control of the nation so that we will have the peace, joy, and the love and everything that goes with it. So sin comes first, came into Adam and Eve's relationship, and it broke the family, uh, the, you know, unity. And from there, we've seen all the falling out of you know, relationship. I've given you some examples the last time when I talked about the smallest battle unit. You know, today, one third of the children in the USA go to bed without a father. Right. And, and uh, uh, 10 million, uh, I think, of the Z, Generation Z, 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 Z they are the under 24 years old. Right. 30 percent of them in the USA don't, be, you know, are socialists. They don't believe in God. Why? Because, you know, the family unit has broken down. So, you know, we cannot, this, that's, you know, obviously, we know God is in control. God, even when they're going through the challenge, God still loves them, right? But it is our responsibility as parents to produce godly children so they can replicate and, and, and do the same thing or even do better than we, right? Uh, because when we are bringing them from, from the beginning, from birth, they know God, they know the, the Bible, they know the scriptures, they show she the love in between the husband and wife, and they see the unity, peace, and joy, and everything, and they're taught in the right way, then there is they have a better start in their life than we even you know, like I came from a Hindu background, right? It was, you know, I was I was 42 years old when I came to the Lord. So my thinking, my culture, everything was wrong, not in line with the word of God. Not that I'm saying I was a murderer or somebody who's a wicked person. No. But what I'm saying is that my, my belief system was not in line with the truth. Right? But I praise God for my wife. Because of her, I was able to transform and change and, and, and came, to, came to, you know. Uh, and fortunately for us, because we got married late, our children, by the time I came to the Lord, they were just, uh, my son was two years old. My daughter was almost four years old. So we were still able to be, in a, as parents, influence them in the, in the way God wants them to be influenced. Okay. So, and just like that, the first marriage was infected by disease. And what happens? So now what you see in marriage, blame, shifting, obstinate hearts, anger, distance, you know, regret, all kinds of things have come in. Right. It's so easy now to give excuse and walk away from a marriage. Because there is, you know, there is no patience anymore to sit together and work at it and try it. But if you from the beginning, if you've done godly way, you build a friendship and the trust with each other, and you work together as a in unity, and then you have that kind of intimacy as husband and wife, and then you build children, you know, you you actually getting stronger and stronger and stronger in every aspect of your life instead of going weaker and weaker and falling away. Right. So that's what it's all about. So that. So, you know, as sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, we live in the first pair of parents' missteps. Whether we like, even though we say we are children of God, we know the truth, but, you know, the, if, if we start, it's so easy for the flesh to trigger us to stumble. So we are still in that journey of building back totally to when Jesus comes. So it's still a journey, we are, you know, back to where we should be. So we are just as messed up as they were. All marriages face tension, some more than others. Nobody's immune. We all suffer from the garden tragedy. We are still a long way from Eden. But the good news is Jesus has won the battle. And, and we will, you know, when, when he comes, we're going to see the glory. We're going to live in that peace and unity and the love that he has for all of us. But there's good news. As I said, Jesus came to fix it and all of it is done. Every one of it, there's nothing. He said, when he says finish on the cross, it's done. Right? And that's the good news that we have in our relationship. And in Paul's letter, the church of Colossians, you know, he said, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all whether things on earth or things on heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. 
Amen. So he has purchased everything for us. Come, Trisha. Right. So God is going to put the whole cosmos back into the shape He intended. As followers of Jesus, we are a new creation. Right. And and the Spirit of Jesus is at work in our life. He's recreating us from the ground up. As you know, if it's as as more and more godly children come into the world. You know, and they start a family. Things are going to get better from that. You know, step by step, step by step, he's taking back what was rightfully uh, should be should have been in the Garden of Eden. Right. But keep in mind that creation is a process. Right. To be sanctified means to be a set apart from the ugly, distorted human we used to be, and to be remade into the real us. So it's a journey. Right. And and through these meetings that we have. Uh, you know, as even as a small group, it, you know, Jesus only took twelve to change the world. Here we have, on average, about thirty to forty of us, and we can transform just as much as what the disciples were able to do. So we start with us, right? And we, once we know the truth, we know what is right and we know what is uh, the wrong, and we know how to, re, you know, rebuild that that relationship that God wants with Him through relationship, through marriage, and so on. Right. So, in reality, marriage is is two broken people coming together to find healing in Jesus and start a family. Right. It is really through Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can give us that healing. He's the one who can give us the peace and joy and love in our relationship, and He's the one who's going to guide us and lead us through uh, when where we need to go according to His plan for our lives. So, in summary, marriage is humbling. We think we are pretty decent until we get married. Okay, I like this. You know, I always say that because, as I said earlier, we think when we come ready to get married, we think we know everything about marriage. Uh, as a man, you know, we think we know everything. The woman thinks she knows everything, and then when it comes to, uh, you know, the true colors bleed out uh, in the beginning of the marriage. There's always that surprises that happens. Uh, it's like squeezing a sponge. So your wife, you know, especially the women are good at exposing the men. Uh, of a lot of misdeed things that we think we know, uh, so whatever is on the inside comes out for a better or worse, right? And I, I can share an example when I got when we got married. Of course, you know we I was we both working, uh, so you know we we only got to know each other. Of course, when during our time together at home weekends, so you know most of the time we had work, right? So we knew a little bit. Then when my wife after my second my second child was born. She said, "I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to look after the kids." Then something new. I started. We started noticing different things in each other. We never saw. We never saw in each other, right? Because suddenly she's at home most of the day, looking after the children, and when I come home, I see you know things change, and she sees a different thing. And then the best part is when we came to UK, Australia in 2005, right? And uh, you know, I I didn't have a job. I didn't have a business. I was still looking around. For six months, I was sitting at home. She was sitting at home. We were looking at each other's face, right? And we were discovering some new things in our, of ourselves that we never saw before, right? Fortunately, some were good. Very few were bad, right? So, so this is it's a journey, right? As we go, but the good thing is because we are mature now. We are, you know, we have known each other for many, many years. We understand the good and the bad of each other. And we, you know, we begin to strengthen each other where our weaknesses. And when we do that, it's, it becomes a amazing uh, friendship. It becomes a real friendship, and, and that's what it is. So in, yes, there will be moments of challenges that come through. And I, I, the best thing that I can remember, my wife told me even before, you know, just months before she she went home, you know, to the Lord, because she, you know she was going through this journey. I was always taking her for to hospital for chemo treatments. Bring her home and you know, preparing food for her and all that. You know, she saw a different side of me. You know, and she said, Matthew, you know something? You're like a rough diamond. I said, What do you mean by rough diamond? She said, I never. You know, you're like a you're a beautiful you're a diamond, but you are not polished. There are moments when you bring out your roughness. You know. So I said, Okay, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> you know, which it was in a way because you know she saw the good the the, the beauty that was in in me. Uh, towards her, you know. So, uh, and I'm glad that even to the last day of her life, I I was by her side, right, giving her strength and showing her love, 
Uh, and, you know, the only place where I saw her really, really, really crying her heart out in pain and it was in the bedroom. The moment she walks out of the bedroom, she's always got a smile, even for the children. And, and that's how amazing she was, right? And I thank God that I was, you know, I was blessed to be able to be by her side and give her all the strength and encouragement. And we became really, really good friends, right? So, yes, initially there will be challenges, but as we open up each other 100%, we're knowing and acknowledging that we are two broken people coming together. And God is bringing us together to mend us and to make us beautiful again, according to his plan for us, things change. And it's such a beautiful, that's why to me marriage is, is, is heavenly. Marriage is heavenly when you really have the right person, partner in your life. It is so beautiful. It's not about money. It's not about anything else, but it is that, that relationship that you build that makes a difference. You know, and that's what it's all about. So is there a serious problems in our life? Don't expect to go away when we get married. I know it usually gets worse. I'm not saying I was a perfect husband. Twice my wife wanted to walk away from me. You know, once you were going for an eye check for my, my children, they were, I think they were about uh, 10 and 12. And that morning we had a big row. My wife packed all the bags, put in the bag in the boot, in the boot of the car. She said, okay, Matthew, we're going for the appointment and then you're going to drop me off in a hotel. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, and that's it. So I said, okay, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> you know, I, that, was a, that was quite hilarious, you know. And uh, then when we finished the appointments, I said, okay, which hotel, darling? She said, no, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying is that, you know, that it is not because they, they, are, they hate you or anything. It's just that, that frustration. There are certain things they're expecting in you that you have not, uh, you have let them down, right? And uh, so this is what it's all about. It's about, you know, honesty and integrity and trust. The only way we build trust in our relationship is through 100% honesty and transparency with each other. When that is lost, it's going to take a long time to rebuild. And that's what it's all about. So this is why, you know, to me, marriage, you know, number one, I 100% agree it's about friendship because it just gets better and better and better. Because when the children grow up, they go away, you know, you are two together for the rest of the life. And you, you know, you can still have a lot of fun in life, right? And you're working together to build a family, to grow, create wealth, to support your children, education, and you're also doing contributing to the world economy, whatever you're doing. Number three, as I said, is sexuality. It is something that is ongoing in our life. As long as you have that uh, love for each other, you know, there is no barrier to that intimacy. And finally, having children and, and bringing it about. Uh, that is, you know, it's a, it's a mission, starting from day one to day two, you know, to the day. So we help each other become our real, True self through friendship, gardening, sexuality, and family. Right? So those are the key four areas why God says reasons why God wants to be married. And it's wholesome, it's healthy, it's godly. Right? So that's why you get married. That's why God created marriage. And in the wake of the fall, a fifth reason is added recreation. So we have to recreate, continue to create. Okay? So thank you guys. I hope this is, you know, is, uh, is short and sweet.